video is on accuracy, precision, and percent error. Accuracy is a measure of how close the measurement comes to the true value. The measured value is being compared to the correct value. Precision is a measure of how close a series of numbers are to one another, and you must compare the measured values of two or more repeated measurements. Okay. Let's go through some example problems of this. We know that the true value of a sample of copper pieces is 5.42 grams. Which set of numbers is most accurate? Now accurate is how close a measurement comes to the true value. My true value is 5.42 grams. So I want to know which set of data comes closest to the true value. A, I have 5, 6, 5.5. B, 5.42, 5.5, 5.4. Or C, 5.8, 5.3, 5.5. Well, choice B as the values that are closest to my accepted value. Therefore, these are going to have the most accurate reading or they're going to be the most accurate set of numbers. Number two says, which set of numbers has the most precision? Well, precision is a measure of how close a series numbers are to one another. So my choices of 10, 100, 10 to the fourth, and 0 0.1, okay? These have a very far range apart from each other. 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.3, these have a difference of a tenths place between each of them. And two, three, and four all have a difference of a ones place between them. Therefore, choice B again is going to be the most precise group of measurements because they are, they are the closest to one another. Okay. Go ahead and try number three. Number three says that the true mass of a partially filled bottle of water is 44 grams. Which set of measurements is the most precise and accurate? So we want precision and accuracy. We're told that our true value is 44 grams, so we want the choice that have the closest measurement to my 44 grams. And to be precise, they need to be close to one another. So close to each other and close to the true value. When you look at your choices, you should get the answer of A. Next, what is error and percent error? Well, error is the difference between the experimental and accepted value. Now, when we look at the difference, we just want to know how far away from that accepted value my experimental value is. And this is always a positive number. Okay. To therefore determine my difference between, I need to use these absolute value signs. There are these straight bars on either side. Okay, and that tells you that it only can be a positive value. So to calculate percent error, that is my amount of error, my experimental value, minus my accepted value, the absolute value of those, the positive version of those, divided by my accepted value. This gives me a decimal. I want it to be a percent, so I need to multiply it times 100. Example number one. A sample of carbon has a true value of 14.5 grams, but when you measure it, you get that the carbon has a mass of 14.9 grams. What is the error of this measurement? Well, again, we write down what's given to us. We're told our true value is 14.5 grams. Our experimental value, what you actually did, was you measured it to be 14.9 grams. To find the error, my error is experimental value minus my actual value, the absolute value of that. I plug in 14.9 grams, subtracting from that 14.5 grams, and I get an error of 0 0.4 grams. Letter B, or the second part, says what is the percent error for this measurement? Well, my percent error is my amount of error, error divided by my actual value multiplied times 100. 
My error is 0 0.4 grams divided by my actual value of 14.5 grams multiplied times 100 gives me 2.76 grams. Remembering my significant figures, 3 here, 3 here, I need 3 significant figures in my final answer. Go ahead and try number 2. You should get an error equal to 2 and a percent error equal to 2.6%.